No, I don't think Google's evil. I think uh, what I think is really interesting is Google once said that um, what they want with their Google search is they, in the future, they really want to make a personal butler. They, they want to create your best friend. And I think that's actually really good because your best friend knows everything about you and they want to create a machine that already knows what you want before you uh, even have to ask a question. But uh, the problem is with the algorithms that we have now is that they are still based on general uh, generalizations and uh, that they're not really smart and they also don't understand that sometimes we need to see something else instead of things we already like. So I think we're now in this weird transition zone and it could just go two ways. We can go into this world where we get different information that's not only related to our likes and interests or um, we go in this world where everything is just one big gray zone for you, actually. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's interesting, of course, to think about it, but I think they also do it, of course, for their own profitable reasons. So you can, of course, consider whether that's evil or not. Okay. Yeah, I really don't know who was first, I'm sorry. I think you in the back. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll speak as loud as I can. I'd like to consider this question of who's in control with another one of uh, who are we blaming? Because sometimes if you consider what the internet has as information, when we use a portal like Facebook or Google, if as a consumer or a user you understand that the information is being tailored, surely the problem then comes down to the user of maybe understanding the technology better because there are alternate sources. The information doesn't go away. Yeah. It's just maybe less easily available. So if the, the user of it is understanding that that is just one method to get the information, uh, that might solve the problem of not blaming Google but blaming yourself. I don't really mean that, but like understanding better as a society why we're being fed information. So if you sit back and let Facebook tell you things, maybe it's your fault for considering that or or the doings. Yeah, that's absolutely also an interesting question to consider, and I think. When it comes to blaming someone, it's, uh, I think also blaming is a very heavy word as well. Um, but um, of course the user can look more critical towards what they do on the internet. And I also know that there are, well, solutions. You cannot really call them solutions. I know that people don't want to use a Google search anymore and they go for, for example, DuckDuckGo or Bing. And, um, but it's really hard. You're also stuck in a system. In Europe, Google has a market share of more than 90%. So also the influence is really big. And if you don't really get this knowledge, if you don't, um, if you're in, in a situation where there are not so many people around you who are experts on the internet, then it's also hard for you to get out of the system. So yeah, I think it's really interesting to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Oh yeah. Oh, Ooh, I have to scroll back. I, I don't know. It just sort of struck me as you were talking about it that um, as you sort of open these borders of information, you're also opening them to the cultural biases of other. Yeah. I mean, this while well, this image, you know, doesn't necessarily it's, it's fine in this culture, but it's something that, um, I mean, Facebook is an American company, and yeah. you can't sort of discredit the fact that they're curating things based on American values, and I think that that's something that, well, I mean, it's very interesting, given that how global they are, um, yeah. Yeah, then it's interesting to consider this question uh, about who's in control, and, um, also, what is the internet? Is it, uh, is it the frameworks that are designed by corporations? So is it about uh, Facebook, is it about Google, is it about YouTube? Or is it about this, this internet before that? So these databases and who owns that? And how free is that in the sense of should we then keep true to these American values or should we also be free to express ourselves in the Dutch culture? So and it was also, it was really interesting when this um, image, um, because all the, um, the Dutch media channels, the TV channels, they backed this up. They were really angry about it. I think 
VP Row and all these other channels, they posted this image all over Facebook. And, um, and then this discussion broke loose as well, which you're saying like, okay, but Facebook is owned by an American company. Um, then we should also accept that we're there because uh, this is their area, basically, their environment. And are we free to use it? And should we then um, keep true to the American values? So it's, I, th I also find it really hard to do, but I think what's the most important thing of this is that um, because we're not allowed to see nudity on Facebook, and I also know that Facebook, for a lot of people, is their main source of uh, news and media, that it also changes the way you perceive the world and perceive news and perceive images because some images are kept away, they're filtered out. So yeah. Yeah, another question? Yeah, um, I have a question. Do you think this uh, who is in control is also um, a question that can lead to further innovation? Because I think the lack of control has been something that is in media for a long time, you know? Like we used to be controlled by information through books, then you have traditional advertising, and then the internet was kind of developed as a reaction to that as well. Yeah. Like at the beginning, the internet was the place where, okay, I don't, I don't care what you tell me because it's not just a one-way conversation. I have the possibility to react. So in this sense, which one would you say would be the next, you know? Like, in what direction is the internet go so that that desire to escape control is still manifested into another recipient system? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think what you say is um, the internet was a reaction to this controlled media. And uh, also this, this ideology and this whole McLuhan thing, uh, people still think that's what the internet is. So it's also our, our review of the internet is not really true to reality because uh, people still think it's some sort of magical place where you can find all the information, but that is just not true. And in a sense where I should think it should go, it's really hard for me because I think it's also now we're really stuck in the system. It's really hard to change it. Um, also because it's now really, the internet is also for commercial use. It's really valuable. And I think you should just all drop that actually before you're able to create a free environment. And I think it's even not possible anymore. So then we should maybe look to another solution. But also, like I said, I don't feel like I am the person with the capability to come up with a solution. Uh, but I love to think about it and I love to discuss about it and also um, engage other people in this discussion. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you in the back over there. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for sharing your work with us. It's very thought-provoking. I just have one curiosity. You call yourself a visual journalist. Well, journalists tend, they talk to the subject, they reach out to them. Have you tried to reach out to Google or have, they, have you had any contact with them? No, I really wanted to avoid it. I was really <laughs> afraid they would be angry and I had to stop doing this because, um, well, I mean, my work is not super critical, but maybe they would think it is. And um, also I'm using their data, of course, I'm using their collected stuff as uh, material. So, I, I mean, I just chickened out here. And I know a lot of people said to me that, yeah, you should contact Google, but I don't know, maybe I should later in a year or something. <laughs> in the end, you're, you're giving them, you're giving their users information on how to streamline their accounts. So it's only benefiting them. Mm -hmm. You're educating their users. If they are not evil, they will absolutely mm -hmm. accept and support the product. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, the opposite happened because um, in this profile, there's also this one button that says opt out. So you can just cancel everything in here. So I would show people this profile and it's like, hey, there's also a button, you know? <laughs> Everyone would just press it. If they're not evil, that's good information. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. 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 Thank you.